Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another video in Server Manager um, Fundamentals. So today we're going to talk about group policy and why group policy is important. Do you guys know what that is? Like group policy is something that uh, server manager server managers manage by. So like um, system admins usually do group policy. Usually um, IT support will not be doing this, but it's good to go over this a little bit just so you guys have a good understanding of it. And it's very important that you understand group policy because you have to understand that sometimes you make changes that are, are contained in group policy. So these changes could be like blocking a flash drive to um, blocking something in the control panel, like the start menu or blocking someone to go into the control panel or blocking something like you right click, do this, right click, do that. You can even put like a photo as a screen desktop for people that just log in automatically. So those things are very important. And um, you also need to understand that in group policy, you could set up password complexity, like uh, how long is how long we want the password to be, um, how long is the password good for, the password age, when is the password going to expire, and stuff like that. So in today's video, we're going to go over just a little bit of group policy, not a lot, but I just want to go over like little tiny bit of the things. And I also want to go over some commands that are important that you should know if you're getting into IT support, because you will be doing these, th these things. If you were going to a job and you were going to do IT support, Obviously, you won't have access to group policy unless you're a sysadmin or a high level desktop support age, uh, desktop support specialist. You may or may not have access to it, but the majority of people that are doing entry level stuff, they're not going to get access to group policy. But it's good to know and understand and navigate to it and play around with it just so you have an understanding of it. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. It's not going to take that long. Uh, it should be very interesting. So we're on server manager right now. I'm going to close that up and reopen it again. And we're going to click on server manager. So what I did was I clicked on the start menu and I clicked on server manager. Super easy, nothing complicated so far. This is where it gets a little strange for people that are trying to learn this, this stuff. Um, you go to tools and you go to group policy management. So you, have you ever wonder like, and I'm going to show you the command right now. Like this is one command to check your password when your password is expiring. I know I went over one command earlier on my videos. This is another one. So net accounts, right? So it says here, maximum password age is one one day. Um, no, sorry, minimum password age is one day. Maximum password age is forty two days. Minimum password length is seven days. Length of password history is maintained twenty four. Blackout threshold never. Blackout duration 30, 30 minutes. Blackout observation windows thirty minutes. Computer role primary. So, have you ever wondered about that? Like. How is this stuff managed? Like the password, the complexity, all that good stuff, et cetera, et cetera. How is that even managing? And, and like, what are the benefits of group policy? So you guys have to understand that it saves time, it's cost-effective, it increases productivity, provides enhanced security, and enables a centralized location for configuration. So that could be anything from a computer to a user. It's all managed in one centralized location. That's, that's why we use group policy, if that makes sense. So that's really, really important to understand. So I'm in group policy right now. And by default, if you go into details, you go into settings, I didn't get prompt for anything. I'm supposed to get prompt because I, I actually allowed it earlier today when I was working on this. But if you just said okay, if you see a prompt here, and then just a show all. And if you scroll down a little bit, keep going, keep going right here, you'll see like enforced password history 24 uh 24 passwords remember 42 days uh maximum password age uh minimum password age one day minimum password length seven characters account lock out throttle zero invalid attempts so that information is cool if you hit the main controllers right here you hit this one right here and you show all and scroll all the way down right there's nothing here like if you go and open this up there's absolutely nothing here. So the one that you want, we want to worry about or, or care about is the one on top. I mean, we could create multiple OUs here or, or multiple OUs and multiple, um, you know, like new group policy measures. If I right click here and then I do group policy, create a new group policy in this domain controller, I link it here. You know, it gets a little more complex. I'm not going to do that today, but basically you could create, a lot of companies create multiple OUs or multiple group policies in place in a, in a forest. I'm not going to go over that today, but I just wanted to show you some, you know, some stuff you could see here. So that, that this is very important. And what's very important is when you're, when, and I'm going to open up the command line again. 
Yeah, so today's video is, is sponsored by Gerald from Simply Cyber. Um, SimplyCyber.io, I want you guys to follow Gerald from Simply Cyber. I'm buddies with him. Thank you for um, thank you for sponsoring me for the month of March. I greatly appreciate it. With that being said, let's get back to that video. Later, guys. Peace. Are you feeling lost in the vast world of cybersecurity, overwhelmed by technical jargon and confusing career paths? You're not alone. That's why I built Simply Cyber. Hi, I'm Dr. Gerald Ozier. Come join Simply Cyber, your supportive and inclusive community for navigating the exciting world of cyber. There's so much to take advantage of. Master the skills you need with Simply Cyber Academy, offering in-depth courses aligned with the GRC analyst role. Never feel isolated. Connect with fellow cyber enthusiasts and professionals in our thriving Discord server. Ask questions, get feedback, share your journey. Check out the Simply Cyber YouTube channel delivering insightful interviews. What are your thoughts around you know, web app pen testing as entry level. And I, I included bug bounty here because that's very accessible to everybody. Practical skill demos and daily cyber threat briefs all hosted by industry experts. There's so much more to discover. Are you ready to join the community and empower your future? Visit simplycyber.io slash socials for all the links and start your cyber adventure today. Earlier on my videos, this is another one. So net accounts, right? So it says here, maximum password range is one one day, um, no, sorry, minimum password age is one day, maximum password age is 42 days, minimum password length is seven days, length of password history is maintained 24, blackout threshold never, blackout duration 30, 30 minutes, blackout observation windows 30 minutes, computer role primary. So have you ever wondered about that? Like how is this stuff managed? Like the password, the complexity, all that good stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Like how is that even managed? And, and, and like, what are the benefits of group policy? So you guys have to understand that it saves time, it's cost-effective, it increases productivity, provides enhanced security, and enables a centralized location for configuration. So that could be anything from a computer to a user. It's all managed in one centralized location. That's, that's why we use group policy, if that makes sense. So that's really, really important to understand. So I'm in group policy right now. And by default, if you go into details, you go into settings. I didn't get prompt for anything. I'm supposed to get prompt because I, I actually allowed it earlier today when I was working on this. But if you just said okay if you see a prompt here, and then just a show all. And if you scroll down a little bit, keep going, keep going right here, you'll see like enforce password history 24, uh, 24 passwords remember, 42 days, uh, maximum password age. Uh, minimum password age one day, minimum password length seven characters, account lockout throttle zero invalid attempts. So that information is cool. If you hit domain controllers right here, you hit this one right here, and you show all and scroll all the way down, right? There's nothing here. Like if you go and open this up, there's absolutely nothing here. So the one that you want, we want to worry about or, or care about is the one on top. I mean, we could create multiple OUs here or, or multiple OUs and multiple, um, you know, like new group policy measures. If I right click here and then I do group policy, create a new group policy in this domain controller, I link it here, you know, it gets a little more complex. I'm not going to do that today, but basically you could create, a lot of companies create multiple OUs or multiple group policies in place in a, in a forest. I'm not gonna go over that today, but I just wanted to show you some, you know, some stuff you could see here. So that, that this is very important. And what's very important is when you're when and I'm gonna open up the command line again, is sometimes um you, you don't have access to group policy because your IT support, your help desk, your desktop support, yada yada yada. But you wanna know like what policies are in place for XYZ user, right? Maybe they're part of a they maybe they're part of a policy that they weren't supposed to be part of. And for some stupid reason, I'm just saying not to use any negative words, but for some of the reasons, they get rebooted on Friday night at 2 p.m. at night. I mean 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And or they get they get rebooted at 6 p.m. in the afternoon. Or they, they're working on something on Sunday night and they, they're set to get rebooted automatically at 8 p.m. at night. So you could set policies like that. You could set a policy that your computer reboots at a certain day, a certain time. You could set up policies where uh, a user's start menu doesn't work for some odd reason. You could set up a policy where they can't they can't go to the control panel. You could set up policies on a lot of different things. It gets really, and I'm going to show you. It gets really granular. But if you want to check what policies 
they, the user has. What you do is you go to their computer, you go to their command line, and it's a super easy command. You type GP result slash R, and then he'll tell you right here, following security groups, the following policies are not applied because they are filtered out. They'll give you more information about your policies. They'll give you more information about the security groups, and they'll give you information about the group policies here as well. So it's like a, a T-bit information to give you. And, and then the, another one that's very important, because sometimes you will have um, uh, policies that are not applying on a PC for some odd reason. So another one that's dear to me is uh, GP update slash force, right? And that one disregards the regular a uh, regular refresh interval and force forcefully reapplies every policy new and old. So this actually forces the policies to, to actually check in and, and puts all the policies back on that computer because sometimes it doesn't see that that policy. So that's very important. And I showed you the other one, which is net account. So those things are very important. Uh, and I'm saying this because you might get you may get a quiz on this. <laughs> so it's very important to understand this stuff. So let's go over group policy real quick. So we're gonna do here, we're gonna right click here, we're gonna hit edit. And then here you have your policies. Here you have your preferences. Here you have your window settings. Here you have control panel settings. And then here is some stuff you can control like um, folder options. And, and you can't really do much here. Like you can do some stuff here, but not a lot. Like where, where it gets fun is the administration stuff right here, right? Control panel. So here, you could force a specific default locking screen. You know how you log, you go to the library and like, why is there, why is this, why can't I change the the lock screen? Why does it look like that? So this here, you could change the lock screen right here to default. Prevent changing lock screen on login. Like I'm gonna enable that. So I'm gonna hit okay. And hit okay. Prevent, change, prevent changing start menu background. So I'm gonna enable that and hit okay. Do not display the lock screen. I'm gonna leave that alone. Prevent prevent enabling lock screen camera, prevent enabling lock screen sideshow for a specific background. I'm gonna leave that alone for a little alone. Uh we're gonna go here. I like you to enable online speech, that's fine. User account we're gonna go apply default uh, computer storage, that's fine. Uh, it, it's very really, it's very granular with 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 um this is why I said group policy is very complicated. But don't worry, I'm just showing you some stuff you could do here. Don't worry about all the stuff that I'm teaching you today. You, you could just go back and revert back to this video if you ever become a sysadmin or something like that. This is really good information. Enable insecure guest logins, not configure. Uh, Prevent installation configuration network bridges on your DNS. Do not show local access only network icon. So this will show if there's like no, like the internet, you know, local and icon, you know, stuff like that. It's very interesting stuff. Network connectivity specifies corporate DNS, um, host name DNS. I mean, the reason why you would even do something like this, and the reason why you would do something like this, like specify corporate DNS, host name. If you if you specify DNS and host name, corporate name, blah blah blah, blah. host name DNS, so, 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 like, as if you want to want to know what the host name is. Like, this is other stuff, like. Internet proxy servers for apps. So here, like you could set up a proxy server, um, Windows connections, uh, wireless display, require pairing, printers, activate internet printing, isolate print drivers from applications, computer location, print browsing, server, start menu taskbar, for start to be to there be full screen size. I mean, remove the prevent access to shut down, sleep, restart, hibernate commands. To so do enable here. Uh, it says if you enable this policy, shut down, restart, sleep, and hibernate are removed from the start menu. The power button is also removed from the, the Windows security, which appears when you can do control D. If you disable or do not configure this policy, the power button, server, hibernate vision are, are available in the start menu. The power button on the Windows login screen is also available. If you disable, or do not configure this policy, okay? Remove recently added list, not remove from frequent programs, from start menu, remove programs, do not keep history, show and hide most use start menu, pin apps to start when start, 
notifications. So it's like a lot of stuff you see here. There's a lot of information. Um, at V, display, net login, security, server match shutdown, require use of fast startup. Uh, service con service control manager settings, shutdown options, turn off auto turn off automation determination of that block cancel shutdown. System restore, turn off configuration. Um, here it gets more more in depth, like system boot performance diagnostic. Uh, Windows shutdown, user profiles, administrator security groups from user profiles, delete user profiles older than a specific number of days. So like, I'm gonna open that up. I think I did open it. it says enable. Should you enable this? Like, if this policy allows the administrator to automatically delete user profiles on system restart that that has not been used within a specific number of days, one day is interpreted as twenty four hours. If you enable this policy, that account. Delete the next system or user profile. This is a, this is pretty. This is good and bad. Like, if you have like a, um, I'm gonna say like, if you have like a, a guest PC that everyone logs into to log into to use Citrix or to log into remote to their desktop or to log into to do something, I would I would implement this policy because, um, it would automatically delete the profile. So that therefore it will make more space on the computer. So whatever that person used that, that computer in that room and they didn't ever come back after 30 days, right? So it makes sense to delete the profile if they don't come back after a certain amount of days, like 45 days or something like that. That way you save space on the hard disk or on the hard drive of that computer. That's this is what I would have implemented if I was working one of my previous roles. If we had like a guest user account or we had a, a user that's using a desktop that doesn't belong to them. Because in the past, when I worked in a company, we had about 45 to 60 accounts logged into a, a regular guest computer. And I have to manually delete each account one by one in the past when I worked in one of my other jobs. So I didn't know group policy had this implemented. So that would be cool if you could implement this in the group policy, um, group policy environment. That would be pretty cool. So... Uh, turn off advertising ID. Do not forcefully unload the user's registry at user log off. Only allow local user profile, status timeout. Set user's home folder. So that's pretty cool. So you could set the user's home enabled um, on, on the local computer, and then you put the path. That's pretty, that is freaking cool. All right. Yeah, so there's a lot of information. Um, like I said, like it's way too much information, way, way too much information. But you guys may want to play with this when you guys have time because I, I just show you how to get into group policy. What I care about is the one on top. So I'm going to get out of all this. I'm going to this one and I'm going to account lockout policies or account policies. I'm going to password policy. And here, this is where you, you can change the password. So when I worked in my other job, it was good for 60 days. So I'm going to put 60 days. Uh, and then password age, I'm going to leave it as one. And then character length was not even seven characters. It was more than that. And this actually will explain that the security determines the least number of characters that a password for a user account may contain. If the relaxed minimum password length limit set is not defined, the setting may be configured from zero to 14. The relaxed minimum password length limit set is defined and disabled. The settings may be configured from zero to 14. The relaxed minimum password length limit setting is defined and enable the setting may be configured from zero to 128. By default, member computers follow the configurations of their domain controllers. It's good information. Domain controllers, seven on domain controllers. All right, cool. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave seven characters for now. What I want to do is I want to do a count lockout policy and I want to enable this and I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to put that the account gets locked out after three login attempts. And the and the account threshold is 30 minutes. And the account lockout counter is after 30 minutes. I'll leave that all alone. So, yeah. I'm going to stop sharing. So, yeah, that's group policy in a nutshell. Um, I know it's a lot of information. But, like, you could go in there, play around, do whatever you want. It's fun. So, hopefully this helps you out. With that being said, have a wonderful day. Later. Peace. Bye.